Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover off on the, uh, I've completed the firewall, um, both wings have gone into the rack and we're starting on the fuselage. So I hope you enjoy the video, um, just the trials and tribulations as we go on the um, Aussie Cruiser build, all going well. Hey guys, alright, no, next update, I've got two wings here at the moment. Um, I didn't film too much of the second wing, purely because it's just identical to the first. I uh, got the neighbour over here and we swapped over. So I got the um, left hand wing here basically finished. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Fuel cap is looking sweet, just beautiful, couldn't be better. Even faces fore and aft on this side. Um, got the wing root satisfactorily on there. Now I'm added a few more rivets. I uh, made a bit of an error. I guess I went direct between the two holes. I didn't take into account the curvature of the edge of the skin. So I got a bit of a zigzag pattern going on there. Um, and filled that up nicely. Filled with, uh, with resin. Beautiful. Going to leave this panel off until we offer the wing up to the fuselage. Once I build the fuselage. So left hand wing pretty much done. I've just um, riveted the top skin on the right hand wing. And now, with a bit of practice on the other wing, I'll do the wing root. And tonight I think I'll do the, well, put the wing tip in on this side. But all, um, all going well and going to plan. One little tip I got, I've got the wings sit on the beams because you've got the, um, the tie down point and the strut attachment point hanging out the bottom. Um, I use this little uh, wheel dolly and if you just lift up the wing, this end, set it on the dolly just on the on the root rib and then you grab the tip and you can see at the moment I've got the tip hanging off the bench so I'm going to work on the wing tip and just by myself I can slide the wing around really nicely so when I want to move the wing back so tomorrow night I'll probably work on the on the root rib it's just easier to have it down at the edge of the bench, um, set it on the dolly, push it back down, and bonk it down. Bob's your uncle. Alright, just a quick one. So I've got the wing tip on, and I've just uh, gooped that up, so it's sort of halfway through the process. And the, um, the join, it's gooped up, added the edge, extra wing tip, and I'm also uh, done the wing root rib and as you can see I've just bogged it up there on this particular part fluffed, fluffed up the filler just so it's high because it sands really easy so rather than go back later and uh, try and add some more it'll fill the gap and this side on this wing just a couple of touch-ups this one's basically complete and I've decided just to fill the whole groove just to make it like an aero seal, I guess, on that wing. But I'll pull the tape off. Yeah, that'll sand up nicely. All right, that's pretty good along there. What you can do with some of these high points, what I do is just lick your finger, or spit on your finger, or a bit of metho, and just touch. You can actually move it a bit. Grab a rag. Yeah, if you moisten your finger, you can just take those. Just take the high points off, it just makes it a little bit easier to sand. Um, you can see, see some high points there. Just with a wet finger, I can just uh, tuck that all in nicely. Just got to keep your finger moist. Use the right PPE and all that sort of stuff. There we go. See how that comes out tomorrow. Right, two wings basically ready. Did a final sand. I'm onto the 
fuselage. So I thought I'd start, well I've got some space, or limited space. There are all the parts for the firewall, or F1 bulkhead. So we'll make a start on that, so identify all the parts, lay them out, and let's get on with it. And the firewall. Spent probably three hours, I guess. Just get all the parts deburred and cleaned up. All nicely primed, ready to start assembly on the firewall. We did have, um, uh, not confusion, but we're sort of part way between the, um, what's called the puck system. Let's have a look over here. So the old style had, the old style Hunter carriage had a, um, a bungee system. And now the new style has this puck system that's going to be installed. So the plans uh, are sort of midway between that and that. And so, so are the parts. You just got to be careful and proceed. Um, yeah. End result will be fine. Um, already started just to break up the bottom a bit. Popped in some rivets. Um, up looking good and I've got my photo guide here. Also had the good old computer. Go work through the guide. And I guess now the assembly you can sort of cheat. It's probably easier. Here's a good little example. So you can rivet, rivet, rivet that on now and do a bit of if you think ahead, you can rivet some stuff while it's nice and easy to get to as opposed to having the firewall here. Um, but you can also snook yourself if you're not careful. The other incident, I guess, you haven't lived until you've jammed your thumb in the uh, rivet gun. And I was um, doing one of these, the big A6s. I was literally holding the back of it as I riveted it. And uh, boom, got my thumb stuck in the rivet. So that's impressive. Also, the other big, uh, the other big incident in the shed, I found the golden... The golden Cleco. So there's a big area there. But we can fix that and put him back where he belongs. Okay, so a couple of hours work, and we've got our firewall all riveted and assembled. Looking pretty good. And then on the back, it's upside down and reinforcing ribs. Nice and shiny. Lucky I've got pants on. And yeah, it's all riveted. A couple in the corners for the engine mounts. And our nose strut. It sits in there like that. The push rods will come through for our nose wheel steering. Uh, that has a lower, obviously a lower bracket here once the fuselage is, is built. Um, so a good few hours in the firewall. Did all the hard work this afternoon, then the assembly tonight. Uh, I left out this rivet here just because I'm not sure about the engine mount footing. And that'll go, that's for the pilot hole there. Another one down here. And I believe, I believe there's um, it mounts up the top there. Obviously, I have to design that myself. Um, the puck system, I'll get to that. It has a pile of rubber discs in here. See the Teflon, khaki colour of the Teflon they use. White would have been nice, but anyway. Um, now in here, show I had, I guess there's a close fit. These bolts, which are on the outside. This is the new part. Um, what would that be called? The um, like the upper stop for the for the suspension, nose wheel suspension. Just that bolt down in there comes in close contact here. Might have it a bit too neat, but I just uh, ground the flat. A puff dimp, which is a little bit more than a bees willy. And um, yeah, same on this side. I've got it all riveted in. This part sort of sits, it is an aftermarket thing. Um, but part with Zenith, I guess the kits grow and things change. So yeah, pretty happy. Got the firewall done. A lot of work there, a lot of rivets. Um, I tried really hard to get, well I did, I got them all facing the right facing in so all the heads are out nicely um, and same up on top so when it's installed on the aircraft 
that'll be sort of the top shelf where everyone leans over and tells me how good all my landings were while well, I got the cowl off so looking good time for uh, we'll call it quits for tonight come out tomorrow and just double check it all check what I've missed if anything but looking good hey guys all right uh, another one another quick update got two wings here all, um, all done uh, the wings are looking really good so pretty happy with the way they're finished up I've got them both the same um, so I've got both wing tips on and filled um, just with the filler leading edge um, fill the seam in uh, turned out really nice and I just filled the corners in you can see there um, just make it aerodynamically sound should go five knots quicker um, what else we've we done the the dreaded root leading edge that's all on uh, this panel will stay off until I mount it up so I can drill um, the attachment points for the wing onto the spar so both wings are mirror image and I've got a left and a right which is probably a good thing got my cabin frame hanging from the roof so what I've been working on I'm in that spot in that awkward position I need to get a mate around here now I um, showed you last episode where I made the wing stand that's outside the, um, the window over there in the carport and I've got these two wings and I've got the missus out here and we tried to lift the wing um, you know I could lift my end pretty easy but she let the team down so um, yeah I just with this COVID stuff going on I need to get a mate around here um, the plan now is to put them in the stand the wings up in the rack I'll probably get rid of this box here um, that this wing's sitting on the, the original crate that it came in which is unfortunate because it's a good workbench but um, we get a lot of squalls and rain and wind and thunder and whatever blowing through outside in the carport there so I think I'll worry about my brand new wings sitting out there so I'll stand them up in, inside here in the hangar um, until such time as the fuselage gets too big on the bench here so the wings will stand up on the rack there get rid of the box and I'll start on the fuselage but until I get some muscle around there um, to give me a hand and if anyone wants a box I might put that on Gumtree yeah, see how we go anyway back to the aeroplane um, firewall, yep, all done, complete up to fitting it to the fuselage I guess and now I'm just starting on the um, smaller jobs well, smaller in size but not necessarily in the actual work required um, the nose strut so for those who aren't familiar nose system has a series of donuts and spacers so you just build those up, spacer, donut, spacer, donut and repeat um, until the bag's empty and then you know you're done when there's none left so it's almost time now too, I'm going to start thinking about these are steel parts um, assembled the wheel, I've just whacked 20 psi in there so if anyone has got a good idea what pressures they're running let me know, that would be great um, so we're doing the snow strut and with the hot puck system I'm not sure whether to paint paint this end and paint the bearing surface um, but anyway I might get all my steel parts out and get them painted or paint them myself um, and I made the fork tonight we're gonna I'll have a look at drilling the axle well it's a 19 mil hole for the axle not too sure and obviously the um, this bit uh, this bit joins to this bit so that's your fork and the nose strut and forward going to forward so it has got a taper which gives you um, presumably a little bit of uh, you know trailing to uh, centre the wheel a la a shopping cart okay meet meet forky for those who don't have kids, if you don't know who Forky is, you better catch up on your Toy Story. So the nose strut with the, uh, the fork. This is one of those jobs that seemed a bit daunting at first, but um, yeah, just measure it about eight times, double check everything, 
uh, forward with the angle of the um, as with the steering bolts so it slightly cants forward probably 10 degrees or so looking at those on the uh, firewall and um, these um, got these clamps that are uh, these Clico ones these are really good so they held it on there and then I've just got the um, pilot holes in at the moment but yeah looking good all right so just stuck out snuck out here tonight to the shed um, just try and do something every day I guess so I've got my wings and that sitting here haven't moved those yet got the bulkhead built um, I just took the um, the nose wheel uh, uh, the axle to get drilled um, took that into a machine shop just want to get the cotter pin or the split pin holes drilled in that and the main axle bolt um, 19 mil hole so spent a couple of bucks on that the neighbors actually a um, machine shop dude so I took it in to see him and tonight I'm just going to go through and uh, um, I'm just starting the deburring process, which everyone talks about all the time, but just cleaning up the parts, um, deburr them all, good opportunity just to get the, um, I'll just take the ink off, just with some enamel thinners, I think that is, um, it just, um, yeah, just rubs off pretty easy, you can see it's coming off already, um, it's a good chance to clean those up, and just deburr them, um, the whole deburring process, I guess it, um, you know, I've got a couple of parts here and that, they'll be sitting on the bench there. Um, it pays off in the long run when it gets time to um, time, time to assemble it. It's really nice to have all your parts already sorted out, ready to go. Um, and it feels like Christmas when the riveting time comes. But anyway, we'll push on and um, try and just uh, get something done every day. Hey, what's going on? Check out all the space I've got here. Have a look at this. Fantastic, alright, so I've just had the guys over and one of my mates um, come around and we, um, so thanks Griffo, thanks Graham, I know you'll be watching, really top bloke. Um, got the wings on my new stand, I'll show you that. It's giving me so much more room now. So I put some wheels on the box and wheeled the original box out and the wings are standing up in their stand. Um, it's so good to get my workbench back. So they're in there, and reminds me, I've just got to put, I've got some cardboard in there at the moment, just some soft sponge or something there, just to make my babies comfy. Um, and they're pretty, pretty rigid as far as toppling, but I might just put a, a piece of mine, just put a strap around there, but they're inside out of the wind, which is great. Um, and what's been happening, I've laid up the, jumped into it, fuselage bottom skin. Graham gave me a hand as he ran this afternoon. Um, because of this, uh, because of this coronavirus stuff, um, unfortunately he came around and helped me lift the box which weighs uh, it's 450 or 750 kilos or something that we got off the trailer. That was the last I saw of him because of the coronavirus and um, I've built half an aeroplane since then. So he came around again today and um, got him to move the box again. Anyway, we laid out the bottom skin which is pretty cool introduced him to some uh, Clico pliers and came time to deburr and he's gone home so anyway um, I've just pulled apart the this is the rear fuselage bottom skin starting to realize uh, it's pretty tight in my shed here but anyway um, this is only so this will be where the main landing gear approximately sits here so my aircraft up here um, obviously rear fuselage, bottom skin. Um, so yeah, got that going on, deburring, polishing up, uh, good little tip, or well, thing I've started to, started to do now is just, um, when I put the Cortec on, um, I found it really hard because the stuff's that good, you can't tell what you've done and what you haven't done, pretty simple stuff. I'm just putting a little tiny tick on each surface now. Same as on the side of these parts. So once they're dry, um, I come out here tomorrow, or in future when I use extra parts, um, you can tell where you have and have not applied the Cortec. But that's what's going on. Um, Deburring tonight, maybe rivet the bottom skin tomorrow night. We're going well. Another frosty night and bottom skin going together on the Zenith.
Aussie built 750 cruiser. Bottom skin, Clico riveted, well not riveted yet, ready to be riveted. We've got the rivets sitting in there and the corrosion control applied. Also got my parts over here ready to um, prime and paint, no strut and control rods mainly. Just decided to go ahead and um, so I've etched etch primer on the as a nose strut and then the um, control control rods and all, all the steel parts basically. Um, I think this is the flat actuator bracket, uh, rear support for the um, torque tube and the seat brackets. Yeah, just made up some little jigs so that I can paint. And what came in handy is I went to the laundry and you know, laundry I found this thing. No idea what it was. Anyway, it's good for um, hanging parts on to, to paint. So yeah. Wings on the rack. Bottom skin laid out. The um, horizontal tail formers are in. Just playing around with the back. Tonight we're going to work on the uh, the front front cabin frame go up along here these parts a bit more deburring and I might drag out the side skin but all going well and the side skins out uh, just with the deburrer and it's taken best part of an hour I guess to deburr all those holes both sides and the four engine four edges plus the two window um, orifices or holes and a banana slot for the flapper on control um, fern laying it on the uh, I got one of those removal blankets um, that I purchased and yeah it's good laying it on that gives it just enough room for the deburrer to do its job keeps it comfy rather than muck around with beams uh, this is only uh, what is it 20,000 20,000 side sheet so it's fairly um, really light and soft at the moment but um, going well and so I've got the fuselage bottom nice and erect there and just rolled up the other skin for now you'll be next if not I'll use the brick all right we'll wrap that one up there guys thanks for watching um, please subscribe it, um, it all helps let me know that people are actually watching um, and feel free to comment if you've got any ideas and next video, hopefully we'll get the um, rear fuselage framed up um, nearing completion. Thanks for watching.